Banana is one of the most important fruit crops grown in India. In respect of area it ranks second. And first in production only after mango in this country. India leads the world in banana. Production with an annual output of about 16.820 mt. In India, bananas are so predominant in. Popular among people that poor and rich alike like the fruit. Considering the year-round. Availability of fruits. Unlike the seasonal availability of other tree fruits, it has become an inevitable necessity in any household in India, for all functions. The banana cultivation in India is most popular agricultural practice. Origin and distribution. The edible banana is believed to have originated in the hot, tropical regions of Southeast Asia. India is believed to be one of the centers of origin of banana. Its cultivation is distributed throughout the warmer countries and is confined to regions between 300 N and 300 S of the equator. Banana is also grown in many other countries of the world namely Bangladesh, the Caribbean Islands, the Canary Islands, Florida, Egypt, Israel, Ghana, Congo, South Africa, Fiji, Hawaii, Taiwan, Indonesia, the Philippines, South China, Queensland and Sri Lanka. Soil. Fertility of soil is very important for successful cultivation, as banana is a heavy feeder. Banana is one of the few fruits which has a restricted root zone. Hence, depth and drainage are the two most important considerations in selecting the soil for banana. The soil suitable for banana should be 0.51 meter in depth, rich, well-drained, fertile, moisture-retentive, containing plenty of organic matter. The range of pH should be 6.5 to 7.5. Alluvial and volcanic soils are the best for banana cultivation. Banana is grown in India on a variety of soils such as the heavy clay soil of the Kaveri Delta, alluvial soils of the Gangetic Delta, black loam in Maharashtra, coastal sandy loams and the red lateritic soil of the hilly tracts of Kerala. These areas are famous for growing good crop of banana. Climate. Banana is essentially tropical plant requiring a warm and humid climate. However, it can be grown from sea level to all altitudes of 1,200 meters. It can be cultivated in a temperature range of 10 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius with high humidity but growth is retarded at temperatures of 20 degrees Celsius and less and more than 35 degrees Celsius. Yields are higher when temperatures are above 24 degrees Celsius for a considerable period. In cooler climate, the crop requires longer time to mature. Plants exposed to low temperature and humidity during active growth stage show reduced growth and yields. Hot. Winds blowing in high speed during the summer months shred and desiccate the leaves. It requires on an average 1,700 mm rainfall distributed throughout the year for its satisfactory growth. Stagnation of water is injurious and may cause diseases like Panama wilt. Propagation of banana. Vegetative method. Commercial bananas are seedless and propagated exclusively by vegetative means. The banana has a reduced underground stem, called the rhizome, which bears several buds. Each of these buds sprouts and forms its own pseudostem and a new bulbous rhizome. These daughter plants are called suckers. Banana is mostly propagated by rhizomes and suckers viz. Sword suckers and water suckers. Sword suckers have a well-developed base with narrow sword-shaped leaf blades. At the early stages, suckers of 2 to 4 months age are selected. Other planting materials are whole or bits of rhizomes. Basrai variety in Jalgayan, Maharashtra, is as a rule propagated by dormant rhizomes. After cutting the parent plant, the rhizomes are removed from the soil, stored in cool, dry place for about two months. During the resting period the remaining part of pseudostem at the bottom falls of leaving prominent heart bud. Conical rhizome should be selected while flat. Rhizomes to be rejected. The weight of the rhizome should be 500 grams to 750 grams. 
It should be 3 to 4 months age at planting. Very small rhizomes will give bigger size fruits with late flowering while bigger size rhizomes flower early but bear small size fruit bunches since banana is highly unstable in genetic constitution. The suckers, rhizomes should be selected from plants, which are healthy, having all the desirable bunch qualities and high yielding ability possessing at least 10 hands in a bunch. Tissue culture. Now a days banana plants are also propagated through tissue culture. Varieties like Srimanti, Gross Michael and Grand Nain are commonly produced using tissue culture technique. Normally disease-free plantlets with three to four leaves are generally supplied in pots for raising. Secondary nursery. Plants are initially kept in shade, 50%, and as they harden, shade is reduced. Gradually, after six weeks, plants do not require any shade. Normally two months of secondary. Nursery is good enough before the plants to be planted in the field pits. Methods of planting. Pit method. Pits of 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters are dug for planting the rhizomes. However, this method is very laborious and expensive. The only advantage is that no earthing up is required as planting is done at the required depth. This practice is not very popular at present. Furrow method. This is a very common method in which furrows of 20 to 25 centimeters depth are opened by a tractor or Ridger at a distance of 1.5 meters and rhizomes are planted in the furrows. In this method earthling up needs to be frequently done to cover the exposed rhizomes. Manure and fertilizers. The fertilizer dose depends upon the fertility of soil and amount of organic manure applied to the crop. For a good yield, 40 to 50 T per hectare of well decomposed FYM is incorporated into the soil. The Recommended fertilizer dose for optimum yield is as follows. Nutritional deficiency in banana crop. Nitrogen. Leaves of all ages become pale green. Mid-ribs, petioles and leaf sheaths turn reddish pink and rosette in appearance. Plantations with poor root growth exhibit such symptoms. Bunch weight and fruit quality is affected. Control. Application of urea, 300G, plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Phosphorus. Plants show stunted growth with poor root development. Old leaves show sawtooth marginal. Chlorosis. Curling of leaves. Breaking of petioles and bluish-green color of younger leaves. Control. Application of DAP, 50G, plant, followed by irrigation is recommended. Potassium. The deficiency symptoms include orange-yellow color of old leaves, scorching along the margins, reduction in total leaf area, curving of midribs etc. Choking of leaves delay flower. Initiation leading to reduction in yield and quality. Control. Spraying potassium sulfate, 1%, solution on the leaves is recommended. Calcium. The deficiency symptoms include deformation or absence of leaf lamina, spike leaf, marginal leaf necrosis and thickening of veins. Control. Application of lime, 50G, plant, followed by irrigation is recosmended. Magnesium. Yellow discoloration is observed in the mid-blade and midrib portion however the margins of the leaf remain green. Purple modeling of the petioles, marginal necrosis and separation of leaf. Sheaths from the pseudostem is also seen. Control. Application of magnesium sulfate, 25G, plant, followed by irrigation is recommended. Sulfur. The deficiency symptoms include yellow or white appearance of young leaves, necrotic patches on the leaf margins, thickening of veins, stunted growth and small or choked bunches. Control. Application of complex fertilizer, 2020, 015, at 20 grams, plant followed by irrigation is recommended. Manganese. Narrow green edge appears at the leaf margins of second or third youngest leaf, which further spreads along the main veins towards the midrib. However, the intervenal areas remain green, giving comb tooth appearance. Control. Spraying manganese sulfate, 
0.5% on the leaves is recommended. Zinc. Symptoms appear mostly in lime soils or soils with high pH. Young leaves become smaller in size and more lanceolate in shape. In the furling leaf high amount of anthocyanin pigmentation appear on its underside. The unfurled leaf has alternating chlorotic and green bands. Fruit is light, green, twisted, short and thin. Control. Spraying zinc sulfate, 0.5%, on the leaves is recommended. Iron. The younger leaves turn yellow or white. Control. Spraying iron sulfate, 0.5%, along with urea, 1%, on the leaves is recommended. Copper. Both young and old leaves show symptoms of chlorosis and curve towards the base, which gives an umbrella-like appearance to the plant. Control. Spraying copper sulfate, 0.5%, on the leaves is recommended. Boron. Deficiency symptoms include reduced leaf area, curling of leaves, lamina deformation. Appearance of white stripes perpendicular to the veins on the lamina of young leaves, thickening of secondary veins and inhibition of root and flower formation. Control. Application of borax salt, 25 grams, plant, in the soil around the root zone of the plant is recommended. Weed control. Regular weeding is important during the first four months. Spading is commonly used in. Normally four spadings a year are effective in controlling weeds. Integrated weed management. By including cover crops, judicious use of herbicides, intercropping and hand weeding wherever necessary will contribute in increased production. Pre-emergence application of diorin, 1 kg A I per hectare, or glyphosate, 2 kg A I per hectare, is effective in controlling grasses and broad-leaved weeds without affecting the yield and quality of banana. Double cropping of cowpea is equally effective in suppressing the weed growth. Intercropping. Intercropping can easily be raised in banana plantation at the early stages of growth. Vegetable and flower crops like radishes, cauliflower, cabbage, spinach, chili, brinjal, ladies' finger, gourds, marigold, and tuberose can be successfully grown as intercrop. Mixed cropping with areca nut. Coconut and cassava is a common and widely adopted practice in South India. Desuckering. During the life cycle, banana produces number of suckers from the underground stem. If all these suckers are allowed to grow, they grow at the expense of the growth of the main plant and hence the growth of the sucker should be discouraged. Removal of unwanted suckers is one of the most critical operations in banana cultivation and is known as desuckering. Such suckers are removed either by cutting them off or the heart may be destroyed without detaching the sucker from the parent plant. Removal of suckers with a portion of corm at an interval of 5 to 6 weeks. Hastened shooting and increased the yield. Earthing up. In case of furrow planting earthing up should be done during rainy season to avoid water. Logging while during winter and summer the plant should be in the furrow. Propping. Propping operation is carried out in areas with high wind speeds. Pseudostems are propped up with bamboo, especially at the time of bunch emergence. Leaf removal. Pruning of surplus leaves helps to reduce the disease from spreading through old leaves. Leaf pruning can change light and temperature factors of microclimate. Pruning of leaves before bunch initiation delays flowering and harvesting cycle. For maximum yields a minimum of 12 leaves are to be retained. Bunch covering. Bagging. Bunch covering is a cultural technique used by planters where export quality bananas are grown. This practice protects bunches against cold, sun scorching, against attack of thrips, and scarring beetle. It also improves certain visual qualities of the fruits. Bunch covering with dry leaves is a common practice in India. Removal of male flower bud. Removal of male bud after completion of female phase is necessary. Once the process of fruit setting is over, the inflorescence rotches should be cut beyond the last hand otherwise it grows at the cost of fruit development. This helps in early maturity of the bunch.
Harvesting of banana. Irrigation of banana plantations should be stopped well in advance of the harvest date, preferably a week, so as to facilitate drying of the soil for movement of labor, harvesting, loading, etc. Temporary sheds should be erected near banana fields and all operations such as cutting into hands. Application of fungicidal paste should be carried out under the shade. Bunches selected should be green, three-fourths ripe, whole, free from rubbing, scratching, bruises, sunburns or other blemishes. Bunches having malformed fingers, octopus-shaped hands, broken, torn or split fingers etc. should be rejected. Three-quarters full stage is recognized by sharp angularities of the fingers. In some banana growing countries, the bunches are marked with date and month as soon as the inflorescence is shot. Under irrigated conditions the variety, dwarf Cavendish, takes 99. 107 days to reach 3 quarters full maturity. Dwarf Cavendish, banana at 3 fourths full. Maturity shows a pulp skin ratio of 1.35 to 1.40 under normal conditions and this gives a fairly accurate index of maturity. For cutting, harvesting, the bunches, one cutter and one helper are required. The bunch should be cut in one stroke 20 cm to 25 cm above the first band or 7.5 cm to 10 cm from the tip of the fingers of the first hand. The helper should hold the same portion and place it carefully on the freshly cut leaves spread on the ground. The last hand is removed if undersized. For carrying bunches to packing shed it is necessary that after 15 minutes of harvest, when the latex flow ceases, the bunches should be taken two at a time on stretchers and should not be allowed to come into contact with soil.